What are the best and worst states to set up an LLC? And I'm gonna go over that here in this video and talk about what state you should set up an LLC for your specific business or real estate investing. It depends on a number of factors. There's not a one size fits all. I'm gonna break it down for you though so you know what state to be looking at to set up your LLC. Now when we're setting up an LLC, I wanna make sure everybody understands one critical point. This is not about saving taxes. LLCs do not save taxes. We are setting up LLCs primarily for asset protection. You may be setting up for building credit or having a partnership structure. There's many reasons for it, but a primary reason to set up an LLC is simply asset protection. And I'm gonna break down why you get asset protection in LLC and how states are different. Some states offer different types of asset protection for an LLC than other states. But you gotta know the states and the differences there to determine what state to set up your LLC in. Now, sometimes you do not have a choice on the state to set up an LLC in. For example, the first rule of thumb when setting up an LLC is you need to set up an LLC in the state where you're conducting business. If you live in California and you have a business in California where you're selling goods and services, you're gonna to need to have a California LLC. Otherwise, California courts aren't gonna recognize you as a corporate entity where you need asset protection and the protection of what's called the corporate veil. If you're sued in California and you don't have an LLC registered there or a California LLC, and you set up in some other state, the state of California is like, we don't care. You did business here and you didn't register in our state. So the first rule of thumb is we need the LLC set up in the state where you're conducting business. Now for you real estate investors, we're gonna set up the LLC in the state where the property is located. I don't care where you live and I don't care about Wyoming or Delaware or all these other states you may have heard about to set up an LLC and we're gonna come back to those states and why some people do consider them, but you're still gonna need an LLC in the state where the property is located. If you live in Oregon, if you live in Arizona, but you've got a rental property in Missouri, we're gonna set up an LLC in Missouri for the property in Missouri, okay? So we're always focusing on the state where business is being conducted. If you're selling goods or services, that's where the business is selling goods and services. A lot of times where you're located if you're working in that business every day. And for real estate investing, we're talking about the state where the property is located. That's where we're gonna go set up the LLC for you real estate investors. Now, I wanna run over a few states that are important in the discussion of LLCs. A lot of states are similar, but there are some states that are outliers in terms of positives and are outliers in terms of negatives. Well, let's go to some of the outliers in terms of positive. First on the positive side is a Wyoming LLC. We're gonna talk about a Wyoming LLC and why it has a unique type of asset protection called charging order protection and it also has some privacy benefits that other states don't offer. Now on the negative side of things, there are some states that are very expensive for an LLC, California being one of them. California has an annual fee of 800 bucks. You have to pay a state fee of $800 to the state of California just for the pleasure of having an LLC in the state of California. And there's other states that are $300, $500 of state fees. A lot of states are gonna be around 50 to 100 bucks in annual state fees. Some states, like Arizona, you have a zero annual fee. So it just depends on the state where you're located. And one thing to keep, out, keep in mind is California is gonna be a high fee state. Um, Delaware is actually a little bit higher fee state. Nevada is a high fee state. Um, Wyoming is a relatively low fee state with a $100 annual fee. All right, now let's talk about what type of asset protection benefits do you get in an LLC? What is the whole purpose of having an LLC? All right, now let's go to the whiteboard. I'm gonna break this down here and describe what type of asset protection you get when you actually have an LLC. Now, when you have an LLC, and here I'm showing an LLC owning a rental property. This could be your small business where you're selling goods or services. It could be a rental property. For asset protection, the treatment is all the same. Now, who owns the LLC? Well, you own the LLC, and we, I'm showing a trust here because we have a trust typically used for estate planning purposes. We're not using trust for asset protection. The LLC is for asset protection. The trust here is simply for your estate planning. But if you don't have a trust, this is just you. The asset protection works the same. All right, let's say something happens on the, on the rental property. Tenant slips and falls. Well, they're gonna be forced to sue the LLC. They can't sue me personally. I don't own the property. My LLC does. My LLC leased the property to the tenant. My LLC sold the goods or services to the customer. They can't sue me personally. That's why I have an LLC. So they're forced to sue the LLC. Now, that plaintiff can get at whatever the LLC owns, so any equity in the property is gonna be at risk, but they can't come down and get to me personally. This is called the corporate veil. Now, this corporate veil is provided in corporations and LLCs, and what it does is it protects the owner of the business from the liabilities of the business. So the plaintiff can only get at the assets in the LLC. They can't bust through the LLC and get down to the LLC owner's personal assets. So your home, your other businesses, your investments account, your savings account, your paycheck, you know, all those types of assets are protected 
from any creditor of the LLC. This is the corporate veil. This is the reason people use LLCs. Now, in all 50 states, you're gonna get a similar corporate veil treatment. There is not much variability between the 50 states. You will get this in every 50 state where you're setting up an LLC. That's why we typically say, set up the LLC in the state where you're doing business or where you have a property. This is the primary asset protection of an LLC is the corporate bill. It's protecting me and my personal assets from the liabilities of the business itself. Now, there's another type of asset protection that can come up in an LLC. This is called charging order protection or called a charging order protection entity or COPE. Now, in a charging order protection entity, what the law says is, hey, if the owner of the LLC has a liability, we won't let the plaintiff that sued the owner of the LLC to get into the assets of the LLC. So, for example, let's say you're individually driving around, you get an accident, you get a lawsuit against you personally, and they have a judgment against you personally, or you default on a credit card or some other loan or line of credit, and you get a lawsuit and a judgment against you personally, where the creditor is going to try and collect on your assets. And if you're like, well, it's my significant assets are all owned in LLCs, what they're going to do is they're going to try to get into the LLCs to force the sale of assets in an LLC. See, here they're working backwards and they're trying to go from you personally, where they have a judgment, into the LLC. Now, in most states, when you have one owner of an LLC that's just you um, and there, there's a lawsuit against you, they are able to go through the LLC and force the sale of assets, get any cash out of the LLC or force the sale of assets in there to pay off a judgment. Now, there are some states that restrict that in single member LLCs, Wyoming being one of them. So for example, if I had a judgment against me personally and that plaintiff wanted to get to my LLC because I had a rental property in there with a, with a half a million dollars of equity, they're going to force me to sell it to pay off the judgment. What they would do is they would go to the LLC, they would file a lawsuit against the LLC with the, after they have the judgment and they would request the assets be sold to satisfy the judgment. Now, if that LLC was in Wyoming, we would get what's called a charging order protection. Now, this is why it's called a charging order protection entity. They're gonna get a, a judgment against the LLC, but they can't force the sale of assets. So this judgment attaches to the LLC, but it prevents the sale of assets or any interruption of the business, distribution of cash. And so that judgment just sits there at the LLC level. It basically never gets paid until you're going to send money from the LLC down to you personally where you have a judgment anyways. So in states like Wyoming, where you get a charging order protection entity, even in a single member LLC, that is a significant benefit. Now, we do not recommend this for every client. Most of our real estate clients are not going to go to Wyoming to get a charging order protection entity because they're not looking for that type of asset protection. They're not worried about their personal liability. They're worried about their business liability affecting their personal assets. Okay. So they're worried about a tenant slipping and falling, a customer coming back and suing them for something and coming after their personal assets. That type of asset protection we get in all 50 states. You do not need to go out, go to Wyoming for that type of asset protection, but if you're worried about personally getting judgments and someone going after assets in your LLC, that's when you need a charging order protection entity and why you might consider Wyoming. Now, if you remember what I said earlier, I said, well, even if you're using a Wyoming LLC, you're still gonna need another LLC to own the property based on when the property is located because most of you aren't there buying Wyoming rental properties. So if I have that property in Missouri, what I'm gonna do is my LLC is, could be in Wyoming here and that LLC is going to own an LLC in Missouri, which is going to own the rental property in Missouri. Okay. Now I've got an LLC in the state where the property is located. Tenant slips and falls. They're forced to sue the LLC here. They can't come down to the Wyoming entity. They can't even come down to me. I've got corporate veil protection right here. Also, let's say they got a lawsuit against me personally. I had a line of credit from some business that went belly up. I personally guaranteed it. And now let's say they're going to sue me personally. I get a judgment against me and they're going to come up here to this rental property that's a half a million of equity. Well, what's going to happen now is they're going to get stuck right here with this charging order protection. And they're just going to get a charging order. I decide not to sell it. That creditor is just going to sit there. Now the downside is that creditor is going to be there. They don't go away. So I've got to try to negotiate to get them away because eventually I'm going to want to take equity out of this thing, right? Um, I could continue to just build assets in the LLC though and just leave them hanging out there. 
The fact of the matter is most creditors don't love being in a charging order situation because they don't get paid. They can't control when they get paid. And so that's a great situation and opportunity for you to negotiate to pay off the creditor for pennies on the dollar. But that is the charging order protection entity. This is why a lot of people recommend Wyoming. This is the primary reason lawyers in our law firm are doing this for clients is to get this charging order protection. If you don't have a million dollars in assets in an LLC, I wouldn't even worry about this. That's a little overkill. We typically like the Wyoming LLC for charging order protection. When someone has a million dollars of assets or more, they're trying to protect from their personal risks and liabilities and someone going after the rental property. Now this could be, a, again, a regular business, but this is typically done on your asset side of your thing, um, whether this is investment accounts or rental properties. That's usually where we see this charging order protection entity, kind of in a holding company spot. Because you can see here on the diagram, we show you owning the Wyoming LLC, which now is kind of a holding company. And then that Wyoming LLC owns a property LLC, which owns the LLC in the specific state. So here we've got, again, two LLCs owning a property. Now there's another reason people like to use a Wyoming LLC, and there's a few other states that are popular for this, and that is privacy. Generally, when you file an LLC with a state, you have to disclose the manager of the LLC or a member of the LLC. And so you're having to disclose either who's an owner or who's the manager of an LLC. Now in our office, we always do manager-managed LLCs. We never disclose who the owner is, but we do disclose the manager. And many times the manager of an LLC is the owner. The manager of the LLC is like president of the corporation. This is the person who can make decisions on behalf of the LLC. But in a member-managed LLC, which we don't recommend, you're always gonna have to show at least one owner when you're filing this. Now there's an exception to this in a number of states, probably about five different states out there where you do not have to file and show the manager or member of an LLC. You simply have to show an organizer, which could be your law firm. For example, we could serve as that when setting it up. Wyoming is gonna be the primary state where this is available. And Wyoming also doesn't require a manager or member to sign on any renewals that could be publicly available. So that's a reason Wyoming has been popular. It does not require a manager to be listed. It does not require a member to be listed nor does it require them to be listed on a renewal. You can designate an agent for that. That is again a popular reason why people like to use Wyoming. States like Nevada used to have this and don't anymore. They require disclosure of that that could be publicly available. Some states have it um, where they don't list it publicly on their website, but if someone pays and goes behind a paywall at the state to pull the actual recorded documents, they can see who the manager or member is. Some states don't require you to list that on the initial filing, but on your renewal you have to file it. So there's a lot of variability to that in terms of what type of privacy can I get. But we like the Wyoming LLC because we know we don't have to list it when you file, and we know your name doesn't have to be listed upon renewal. You can designate an agent or organizer, which could be your law firm. Of course, we do that in our law firm for our clients. All right, so let's back up and summarize here. You're gonna set up an LLC in the state where you reside and are conducting business, or the state where you have a property, for those of you that are real estate investors with rental properties, we're gonna do an LLC in the state where that property is located. Remember, LLCs are not designed to save on taxes. You can use an LLC to save on taxes if you're selling goods or services, but that's gonna require an S selection, another conversation for another day. What I'm trying to focus here on is asset protection and knowing the state to set up your LLC and when you're conducting business. Now, everybody's situation is different. There's no way I could cover this in a short video here. It requires specific consultation in your specific situation. And a lot of times there's pros and cons and there's not a cut and dry situation of what state to set up your LLC in. You could be an online business, doing business in multiple states. What state do I set up my LLC in? We may default to the state where you reside, but what if that's a state that's a crappy state, like California for LLCs? There's a lot of other planning considerations there. How big is your income? Is this a high risk type of income situation? Do we have a state income tax issue? There's a lot of different considerations there in setting up the LLC we don't have time for in the video. But when you're conducting business, you need to look at the state where the property is located or the business is being conducted. One misconception I want to make sure everyone understands is you do not get around state income tax by setting an LLC up in a state that has zero state income tax. If you're doing business in Arizona, for example, and you're like, well, I'm just going to set up a Nevada LLC because there's no income tax in the state of Nevada, and I'm going to conduct my business in Arizona, but that's a rental property or selling goods and services, now, that doesn't matter. The state of Arizona is still going to require you to pay state income tax to the state of Arizona because that's where the business is being conducted. So don't think setting up an LLC in a different state is going to get you out of any state income tax. A lot of people have a misconception and think that.
Now, if you need any help planning this, sorting this out, fixing an LLC, setting up the right LLC in your situation, contact my law firm, KQS Lawyers. You can click the link in my bio to access that. And make sure you're subscribed. I'm always going to be coming on this channel, creating more content about how to save on taxes, build wealth, protect your assets, and take control of your financial future.